Hi, my name is Chris Bosley. Um, it's 16th of May, 2017. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, evidence that I think I found suggesting remote access of air gap machines. So the machine that I'm talking about, um, first of all, there's been a history of here <clears throat> and lots of evidence suggesting that the attackers in this building and surrounding buildings um, here in this area that I live in are uh, highly trained in hacking. It's a small group of people that are very close-knit and uh, secretive and uh, they're part of the Anglican uh, and affiliated churches affiliated churches being Presbyterian and Baptist and any other churches that the Anglicans here in Australia allow to be part of their little culty crew or whatever you want to call it. I think it's a cult, but whatever. Call it what you will. So, I um, lived here for a long time and uh, every machine and every device we've had has been hacked and tampered with. And um, uh, I think that, personally, I think that evidence suggests that the these the body of students here are have access to privy information about devices and i think that that um, information cause comes even from the government and from the um, anglican influence within the government it's like a church state relationship here in australia very much like uh, the church of england is in in um, england a church state relationship between the church and the state and i think that um it's very uh, powerful relationship here in Australia. Uh, I think the Australian government is utilizing students within the church, training them and uh, utilizing them and using them uh, in its surveillance force uh, because there's a huge uh, push here in Australia to acquire data, uh, to survey people's data use, to keep data, for example, the metadata retention law that was passed in Rufus Black R-U-F-U-S-B-L-A-C-K it was like uh, one of the main people that supported that movement and he was he's an Anglican so there's a huge uh, influence uh, in the Anglican community to push for data acquisition and controlling data surveillance of computers devices networks so what I did was uh, because of all the acts because of all the remote accessing and because I r took my laptops apart, removed all the wireless and Bluetooth cards, and still they were accessing by some secret uh, back door into the hardware, I went out and I bought a PC Duino, and uh, I had no wireless on it and no Bluetooth. So the the mother the the system on chip or the uh, single chip computer, single board computer, is um, has no wireless and Bluetooth on it. And uh, when I started it up, I immediately saw evidence that it was being configured remotely. And um, I also saw evidence of the dot directory. And in Unix, the dot directory is the uh, current directory. It had uh, a strange access time. So um, I think that um, I'll just go into it and I'll show you that right away. Because uh, it just popped up by itself, and it was choose your input method, um, and uh, the input method was uh, Chinese, and there's a whole bunch of Anglicans that work at, uh, going to this university, and uh, many of them are Chinese, and I've, um, I've experienced this before with uh, my other, uh, uh, when I turned, as soon as I turned my phone on, as soon as I turned this on, uh, it was running fine, and then this uh, input method just popped up on its own. I never touched anything. It just popped up by itself. And, uh, and, um, it's, uh, input method switching. And, uh, it, using iBus, and, um, the, uh, uh, it said that, um, the, the, this, uh, the method of choice was um, was Chinese. So I never did this. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned that, um, yeah, it's Chinese. So someone set the, um, the input method switcher. It wasn't either. Okay, so anyways, uh, 
right here you see the IBUS it was chosen use IBUS and IBUS is a method of uh, inputting like foreign characters like Chinese and uh, pinyin and other things like that uh, the default here use setting by system admin this should have been the setting on startup uh, and I never even started any of this so um, it just opened up on its own so I went back through the video that I had taken of the um, of the startup and um, I found that it 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 popped up right after the original startup and there was no graphical user interface activity uh, it just popped up and I'm going to show you that right now okay so um, here's there was the startup processor I'm um, uh, process I'm recording this uh, and um, this is a pre-recording and I'm just I'm showing you here so I started this up and um, I I'm gonna go through and uh, you'll see um, if you watch in the corner here you'll see the um, icon pop up and um, it's the icon for the system or the um, input uh, method switcher so at about um, uh, well we'll just go through and, and I'll show you the blue screen will pop up when the PC Duino starts the mouse will pop up and then you'll see in the corner the uh, method switcher will pop up and uh, it'll just uh, pop up on its own right there so so we'll watch we'll we'll do that now Okay, so there's my mouse. And then right over here. This seems to uh, have uh, see it pops up right there. So there's my mouse. This is um, see I didn't even notice. I didn't even recognize that it popped up. This is, uh, but that's it. It's pretty fast. That's the method switcher. Anyways, mm -hmm. um so uh, I never even recognized, I never even realized that it popped up. So when I was running through and starting up the PC Duino, I didn't even realize that it popped up like that in the corner. I didn't even notice it until much later because I was totally focused on something else. I was focused on the dates of the USB dot directory. And the reason I was focused on that is because um, whenever the Anglicans connect to one of the machine, any of our machines, the, the dot, dot directory of the USB is always January 1st, 1970, and that's incorrect. The dot directory is the current directory. It should not be January the uh, 1st, 1970. It should be the current directory. But I think the reason it was taking 1970 because it was taking the uh, directory of the owner of that. Um, so they, 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 they annexed the machine, essentially, and their machine is January 1st, 1970. They don't really have a date. It's the Unix epoch time. So when they annex the machine, your machine, your current directory, you, you, your user takes their date. So when, um, and this happened for the longest time, it's a long story, but that's exactly how it was for like two years. And then, uh, uh, so uh, when I was running through the PC Duino, that's what I was interested in focusing on was the dot directories and studying whether or not it was January 1st, 1970. And um, later on in the video, that's when I realized that the input methods uh, switcher had been initiated. And you'll notice that on the desktop there, there's no graphical user interface. The switcher just pops up on its own. It's initiated behind the scenes. So I think what's happening is somebody connected to it, either scripted to watch for the device and then automatically start up because it was completely arbitrary. They're not going to sit there 24 hours a day waiting for it. I think what happened is they knew I had the device and they had like scanning equipment or where searching for that device and when, when it found it you know, immediately in the set off a script and uh, connect to it remotely that's what I think um, because it's been months since I bought the um, uh, but bought the PC do we know and nobody knew that I was gonna use it today so I think that's what they did so um, the uh, uh, 
you saw there that the method input selector popped up automatically right after startup. Uh, another thing that um, happened was that when I was starting it up, it kind of stalled and then kind of flickered and then restarted, almost as if it, it was going through a cycle, uh, a cycle, and then something stopped it and then rebooted it, almost like uh, they had affected the firmware or something and then rebooted it um, a second time. So, um, and, and then it stalled and then I restarted it myself. I reset it or pulled the power and then restarted it and then it started up. But um, what I want to show you now is that uh, directory, uh, the dot directory uh, being 1970. And it's the same thing on, on this uh, PC Duino as it was on all of our uh, computers. So I'm just going to go through and show that. Okay, so here's the um, open. I opened the terminal in Ubuntu on PC Duino, and uh, there it says Ubuntu, Ubuntu, and I put in a brand new disk, a brand new USB disk, and uh, there's my command list al um, media and new volume. That's the new volume that um, I plugged in, and here you'll see uh, Ubuntu, um, and um, January 1st. 1970 is uh, the dot directory. Now that's not right. The the dot directory signifies in Unix the current directory, and the the double dot directory signifies the parent directory. The parent directory here is taking the system time, which um, is zero uh, eight because it was eight minutes after I started up, <clears throat> and the system time is zero zero, January first, 2010 at zero zero. So uh, it's owned by root. The parent directory is owned by root. Okay, that would be the root directory. And Ubuntu, my user, uh, says January 1st, 1970. So it doesn't make any logical sense that the system is at January 1st and has a system time of 0, 2010. And my directory, which is a child of that parent root directory, says 1970. The only thing that makes sense to me is that when they annex the system, when they connect to it remotely with whatever backdoor they're using, and it's a backdoor through the hardware, um, uh, has to be because. Uh, so I think that it's a uh, it's a backdoor to uh, uh, the um, uh, hardware. So a backdoor into the uh, computer through the hardware, not using wireless, not using Bluetooth, not using anything like that. So I think what they're doing is they're coming in through the uh, backdoor using hardware interfaces and they're using like virtual technologies and virtual systems to duplicate the system or to run their own system. I don't know how they're doing it. Uh, but I think they're, but I'm pretty certain that they're using a backdoor and there's a secret way into the machine. And uh, I think these Anglicans know it. I think they are taught it because uh, of their relationship with the Australian government. And um, this happened on all of our uh, computers. The dot directory of the USB, the current directory, would always be January 1st, 1970. And uh, on this system, on this PC Duino, if you write to the USB stick, then it takes the current date. The dot directory then switches from 1970 to the current date which is January, um, in this case, the video that you just saw is January 1st, 2010 at 0008. So um, that's what's happening with the system. I think that that indicates that they have scripted an automatic attack to this device, that they knew I had this device previously if through any of several means. And uh, we're scripting, sc scripted, we're scanning for it, and then scripted um, an automatic uh, attack that uh, automatically attacked the system as soon as it, it was um, uh, as soon as it was um, uh, uh, sensed uh, or as soon as it was scanned, uh, they attacked it with um, automated uh, script. Uh, so I think they're doing this crop cross platform. So this is a PC Duino that showed this behavior, and the interesting thing is that the PC Duino showed the same date. Uh, uh, January uh, 1st, 2010 is the same system day as my phone. And um, it's the same uh, January 